What did you say, dude? What did you say, bro? Wanna well, try me? Try me? <laughs> dude! It's an Xbox 360! Oh, snap. We actually got a few things. We got some USB to USB-C adapter, a GoPro cover case, and then the Mamba. We got a backpack. Now you might be thinking, why is this so important? I'll tell you why. Because for the past couple of months, I've been using this bag and this bag to carry all of my equipment. This for work and this for camera equipment. And as you might be able to tell, it's very inconvenient. This bag isn't big enough to carry all of my camera equipment. And this bag isn't big enough to carry all of my work equipment. So if I had a way to not only add space, but also combine these two bags, then my life would be butter. Dude, dude. Try me, bro. Try me, bro. Fucking try me. Oh, where'd the knife go? I'm losing my fangs. I'm losing all my fangs. Oh, look at that. It folded up just like that. So this bag I found online. I thought it was really cool because it has space up here to put my laptop in, other space here for my other work stuff. And if I have microphones, whatever, you know, small accessories, we put them right here. And it also has this little compartment right here that comes out where I can put all of my drugs, all of my camera equipment in here. <laughs> you see this dude? You can fit a baby in here. You can fit a child in here. Yeah, that's it. It's not that cool, okay? I only have like 150 subscribers. What were you expecting me to pull a diamond out of here? It was like four bucks, bro. It was made in China. But anyway, that's it. I thought it was cool. Look at this little plant I got from Korea when I went. Look at that. There's a plant in here. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that neat? Isn't that neat? Isn't it neat? Isn't it neat? My camera's about to die. These freaking things, dude. My cardio is worse. My overall just stamina is worse. But now my brain enjoys it. Now my brain likes it. Even if it doesn't make me feel necessarily good after I take it, sometimes I hit it and I feel sick, but my body still craves it. We're at that point in the experiment where my body, it's been craving it, but now it craves it. We going back to the gym. The last thing I want to do right now is go to the gym. I've been working 60 plus hours a week, nonstop, traveling back and forth, driving. I'm exhausted. Exhausted. But going to the gym is something that I have to do. If you let yourself slip, then it all crumbles, dude. The castle crumbles. As soon as you let yourself start to become a little mushy and start to become a little lackadaisical, that's when life gets you. But, you know, we're going to do the best we can do. And we're going to overcome this adversity. And we're going to be better for it. All right, we're here. And I'm about to have the workout of a freaking lifetime. Because it's always on the days where you don't want to go where you have the best workouts. What is on my camera? I'll see you guys in the gym. Deuces. There was a big line to get in the squat racks. This man right here, beautiful angel of a man, told me that I could work in with him. Tell a little bit of your story, bro. So about five years ago, I weighed over 300 pounds. Jeez. I uh, got into the gym, started lifting. I'm down to about 160 now, but now I'm addicted to it. Now you're a gym every rat, dude? Day. Oh yeah, every dude. day. Come over there after one of your sets, I'll show you a picture. Okay, bet, bet. I freaking forgot to find him, dude. I forgot to find him and get the photo, but he probably looks something like this. If he's 300 pounds or like this or like this. And now he looks like that. That's crazy. That's insane. What would you say got you started in uh, going to the gym and like changing um, your life up? A bit? Really, it was my friends. All my friends were in the gym yeah. and I wanted to lose weight and I just wanted sure. to be healthier. It sort of changed my life. Everything changed. You know, you come in here with some friends, you kill two, two hours out of the day, you know, hang out with your friends. Yeah, I feel like that's a, a big thing nowadays is everyone feels like they need to be a lone wolf and like do things kind of on their own. But I've been hearing bits of advice from hyper successful individuals where they say that having a good group of guys that share core values and will get you into good habits like going to the gym is like super beneficial. Would you agree? with that oh yeah 100 percent. yeah it doesn't have to be a big group you know two three of you guys you know you guys can do anything you figure anything out. yeah two two three good friends take over the world oh bro. yeah 100 percent. yeah for sure hey dude it was great meeting you my guy great meeting you, great too, meeting you. i am facing a pretty big problem right now and that problem is is i have no good workout music anymore leave a comment down below good workout music somebody send me something <clears throat> I was at my grandma's today, and we were having family over. We were celebrating one of my cousin's birthdays, and uh, I overheard my grandma talking to people in our family about 
what went into her making the cake that she made for my cousin for her birthday. And I was looking at her, and this woman is fresh off the boat from Italy. Her, you know, she has choppy English, and she's the best woman on the planet. She's my favorite person by far. She's just such a pure, nice, solid, strong, so strong, strong woman who is so comforting. When I was a a baby, I was a huge crier. I'd cry all the time. And there were times where in the middle of the night, they would have to call my grandma to come over and carry me because she was the only person who could calm me down. And so I'm hearing her talk about how she made this birthday cake. And you can see the joy in her eyes as she's telling this story. And knowing her and a bit of her background, it was kind of interesting to see. It was interesting to realize that for her, that's enough out of life. For her, doing things for other people that she cares about is enough. Having a family, not being super rich, not being just being well off, being able to eat, keeping your kids safe, and serving her family is, that's enough for her. That's all that she wants. That's all she cares about is her family. That's everything to her is family. That's, it's everything to her is family. There's very little outside of family. And for the things that are outside of family, they don't even come close to where family sits on the priority list. But seeing that and seeing people like that is always really interesting to me because it reminds you that there's an infinite number of ways to live life and there's an infinite number of metrics to view what a successful life is and to view what a fulfilling life is. Some people feel like until they become super rich, they'll never be happy. And then there's some people who value, who hyperfixate and value friendships And then there's some people who value their loved ones. There's some people who value, you know, family. Uh, There's people who value the rush of doing things in life that provide them adrenaline. But for everyone, to some degree, there's a metric by which they view the world. And living in the U.S., in today's day and age, for the younger generations, there's definitely a big stressful metric that's forced on most kids because we hear the most extreme voices on the internet. The most extreme successful people get all the attention. And it makes you feel like if you are not them, then you are not living a fulfilling, successful life. And I think it causes a lot of issues within younger people, for sure. Uh, People feel like they have goals set by society that they then set for themselves because they want to fit into society and fit in with the groups that they like and aspire to be the most. And some of these goals are so extremely hard to achieve. And some require just being at the right place at the right time. And some require an amount of grit and sometimes even genetics and, and things that are out of certain people's control. And so a lot of times people will have an idea of what they envision success to be. And if they don't achieve that, then they're not successful by their own definition. But success, for nearly everyone, success rarely ever takes the image of what you want it to be. But yeah, anyways, that's all I had to say. I got a meeting. I got to go. Peace.